ドゥルドゥドゥドゥルドゥルドゥルドゥドゥドゥルドゥルドゥルドゥドゥドゥルドゥルドゥルドゥドゥルドゥルドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥドゥ Core i7 7740X processor, which is the latest quad core CPU from Intel, and it's based on Intel's new HEDT platform,、um, Chipset X299.、Um, this is actually Cable Lake X, and it's socket LG2066. Now, in terms of specifications, the i7 7740X and the i7 7700K, which is on the、um, Which is Cable Lake itself,、um, the specifications are identical apart from a couple of variations, a couple of different differentials, should I say.、Um, the difference is socket type, there's a lack of integrated GPU on the Cable Lake X chip,、um, there's 8 meg of cache instead of 6, there's a 100 megahertz、um, boost on the, on the base clock over the 7700K, so it should perform pretty similarly. Um, now, it was launched at £335 in the UK and $350 in the US, so it's around the same pricing as the i7 7700K Cable Lake processor from Intel.、Um, as well as that, there's a decent range of X299 boards already on the market as well,、um, such as the likes of the、um, X299E Gaming Strix board,、um, ranges from Gigabyte, Airshock, and so forth, so there's a big range.、Um, But not to waste any of your time, let's take a look at how it performs as well against the i7 7700K, but also against Ryzen 7 CPUs as well as、um, the i9 7900X. And we'll come back and we'll discuss what's wrong with it and what's right, what Intel have got right for a change. So, as you can see by the graphs and the performance testing that we did, the CPUs are virtually identical and neck and neck in every shape and form. But there are a few pros and there are a few cons about the i7 7740X processor. First of all, overclocking, I managed to get 5.3 GHz on this chip.、Um, this is mainly due, due to the、um, thermal conductivity between the IHS. The die and obviously the cooler it's used. Now, these chips do run very hot,、um, especially the 10 core 7900X, but the i7 7740X does actually run slightly cooler than the i7 7700K. This is probably due to the larger IHS, the larger die, although it's the same chip in relative terms to the i7 7700K.、Um, These also can be delayed so you can get even better thermal performance from them, but obviously, this is going to void your warranty. So, if you're not a big fan of that, don't do it. What I do like about the processor itself, the 7740X offers great performance, especially when overclocked, thanks to the better thermal performance over the 7700K. And the pricing is there or thereabouts, although it is going to cost more for this chip. Although the chip is cheap, it is virtually the same price. Um, the boards are actually more expensive on the whole, and obviously, it only does support dual channel over quad channel. Now, that is a big caveat, in my opinion, although not necessarily a big thing in terms of real world performance, but in things like synthetic benchmarks, quad channel 
does offer more bandwidth and it is obviously better. What I don't like, now this is where Intel have absolutely made a mess of it. Um, this chip actually only has 16 PCI lanes, which if you want to run multi-GPU um, setups, this is not the chip for you. And it's pretty pointless in my opinion to have this on a HEDT enthusiast platform, which is strikingly really, really strange from Intel. It seems very rushed. It seems very lazy and it's a little lackluster in terms of overall performance, what you would expect on an enthusiast platform. I would probably recommend getting a Z270 system with an i7-7600K if you're looking for a quad-core CPU and I would give this an absolute swerve. Now X299 is more expensive than Z270 and for users the 7700K and a Z270 board offers better value and better support for multi-graphic setups as well as likes of your PCIe, SSDs, NMVE, etc, etc. As I've said, it only supports dual channel memory as opposed to quad channel and that's a, it's not massive, but the 16 PCI lanes thing, when I first saw that, I actually nail enough spit my coffee out on the computer. I was like, what the hell is going on now? Obviously, if you are looking to make a step up in the future to a multi-core system and you want to get the latest platform, then obviously the 7740X is a good value entry option. But if you're going to lay down £300 on a motherboard, you're going to use a decent GPU, say maybe a 1080 Ti, which is around six to £700 plus, I don't think the you know, difference in CPU and the pricing is going to make too much of a difference. You're probably going to buy a high-end processor and although this is a high-end processor in terms of desktop computing, it's not HEDT, you know, worthy, and it's a pretty big fail. This is probably the first time we haven't ever given an Intel CPU an award at player. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's a good CPU when you look at it at face value, aside from the lack of PCI lanes and obviously the lack of quad-channel memory support. And although the performance is identical and the pricing is identical to the 7700K, you would be better off building a gaming system featuring a Z270 platform um, chipset board and the 7700K. Now that's obviously a caveat because you can compare that to Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 in terms of pricing and it becomes a bit of a jumbo. But obviously everyone's got their own opinion, um, but this is mine and would I buy the high 7740 x No, no I wouldn't and I'm sorry, but it just seems a pointless chip on a pretty rushed platform altogether and if you're not an overclocker and you don't want to get you know five gigahertz with relative ease because these chips i mean the first chip i tried is all the sample you know silicon lottery plays a big part in it i've i've heard, read i've seen a lot of chips doing over five gigahertz no problems at all and obviously with the better thermals overclocking is better but in general computing terms swerve it get 7700k and a z270 board I've been Gavin from Player TV. Thanks for watching my review of the Intel Core i7-7740X. Would you buy this processor? Have you bought one already? What do you think of it? Have you overclocked it? Let us know in the comments below. I've been Gavin from Player TV and ciao for now.